As you know, I am representing here Virginia ADS Consortium, uh, which is consists of uh, several Virginia universities. So, for example, University of Virginia, Virginia Tech, and Virginia Commonwealth University are the three major players in the consortium. And then we also have Jumpstart, which is uh, Charlie Bauman's organization, which basically is from Los Alamos, but he's trying to move it to Virginia. And there are two other companies, and Jefferson Lab. Uh, so these are part of Virginia Consortium. And I am personally here representing a nonprofit organization, which is uh, International Symposium on Hydrogen in Matter. You know, Proton is everything, as you know, in the universe. So everything starts with that. So including, there are a lot of effects related in the nuclear reactors associated with that and particularly accelerator-driven subcritical systems need uh, accelerator to provide protons on a target to produce these neutrons that are required to convert thorium into uranium-233. So this is one way of actually getting into thorium reactors. So here is the outline of my talk. I just want to remind us about the USA Atoms for Peace announcement by our president, Dwight Eisenhower, on, November, on August 8th at the United Nations uh, New York uh, conference, and which led to the forming of International Atomic Energy uh, Authority. And also, uh, the next year, November 1954, Homi Baba uh, came up with the idea of a three-stage nuclear energy program for India, which is continuously evolving since then. And I would like to introduce these two to start with. And then I will show you a few view graphs about the ADS worldwide project plans. These are all plans, except maybe there's one project which is approved. I will try to update you on that. So how many of you have seen this picture? Ah, that's not that many. So that is our president, Dwight Eisenhower, uh, giving this, or uh, announcing uh, Atoms for Peace plan on August 8th uh, in New York, United Nations. So if you are interested in learning a little bit about the politics, how all this came about, you can actually go to uh, his library, uh, and all the information is available there. And here you are seeing uh, the first United Nations conference that happened in August 1955 in Geneva. And here you are seeing Homi Baba, the India's uh, three-stage nuclear program architect. And he was unanimously chosen as the director or president of this conference, where there were about 1,200 international scientists, engineers, chemists participated in this. And apparently about 500 international press was present. This was a major event in 1955. So as you can see, 55 to now, how many years? Almost 60 years. We haven't made big progress except that United, United States led the world in energy, nuclear energy. We built about 100 and odd power plants. Only, I think, until 1970, 80, and then everything went quiet. So we are sleeping, basically, here. We could leave, lead the world. We said we will provide atoms for peace. That can be literally done if we put our minds to it. I think. Uh, this is a nice form where you can maybe influence your local politicians to educate them on how we can change the humanity's health and happiness. We have the power in the United States to do it. I think that is the message we have to give it to our uh, statesmen. We could be the moral authority. We don't just want to be a superpower, but we could be moral authority of the world by giving this cheap energy. They said, you don't need even meter this. This is going to be 
so cheap at the time. They are talking about in 1953, they said, the nuclear power can, need not be metered because it will be so cheap. So I think that is a thing that can be implemented now. And there are many companies, startup companies that can do that. And I would uh, basically say that Thorcon has a great plans. And I learned about Thorcon from Ralph Moyer at the last meeting in Chicago. And we are trying to do something about it. So this is the uh, three-stage Indian nuclear program. And if you do not know, they are done with the uh, first phase, which is the pressurized heavy water reactors. These are of Kandu type. These were basically designed and built by Indians. And they get something like 300 gigawatt year from uh, the natural uranium. India doesn't have much supply of uranium, so they are trying to use whatever is existing there via this three-stage program to be self-sufficient, more or less. That's what their goals that was started in 1954 uh, uh, by Homi Baba. And currently, they have built a uh, fast breeder test reactor. Uh, actually, it's not a test reactor. Uh, it's a 500 megawatt commercial reactor has been completed near Madras which was expected to go critical last October when the Indian satellite went to circle the Mars. They were hoping to do that at that time, but hopefully by this October, maybe they will announce that, that it has gone critical. So they have basically come to the second stage and where they will take the uh, plutonium and uranium uh, mixed oxides with a uh, thorium blanket, which will be converted into uranium-233. And they will take that uranium-233 and in the third phase, will build uh, the U-233 nuclear uh, power plants. And they have completed uh, the advanced heavy water reactor. You can go and see the designs. I think they are, I think, available on their website at BRC, probably. And also, actually, they are uh, hosting a Thorium Energy Conference 2015, this October 12th through 15th. Uh, let me go back a little bit. There are three organizations in the world trying to push thorium energy. One is uh, this group here, Thorium Energy Alliance. And a similar organization based in Sweden is International Thorium Energy Conference, which also runs annual conferences around the world. And I have started without knowing. These all came around 2009, all these three setups. I do workshops on accelerated driven subcritical systems and thorium utilization. We ran the first meeting in uh, Virginia Tech and second meeting in 2012. Eleven was hosted by Bob Atomic Research Center. And last year, we had our third meeting at VCU, where I think uh, Thorcon was also presented uh, for the first time in one in our series of meetings, anyway. So if you are interested, probably you should go back and look at the International Thorium Energy Conference uh, 2015 or 15. Uh, so you can see uh, what is being planned there. So I think I gave uh, this introduction to ADS uh, last time around. And I think I want to say that NRC involvement in the United States, as we all understand, if you want to go through NRC, you cannot really do anything about it. So I think that was a misnomer in this view graph that I would like to correct. So Charlie Bowman, who was a, a senior scientist at Los Alamos, who came up with this idea about energy generation with accelerated transmutation of waste. He came up with this new uh, Gemstar project. And uh, for that purpose, he actually went and did some neutron cost estimates that are required to convert this waste into nuclear power, and also, in principle, can be used to produce uranium-233 directly uh, from thorium. 
And what I am trying to show is with the advances we made with the accelerator technology, the cost of neutrons now dropped by a factor of three. So the small red star at the bottom, you can see that. So as I said, uh, this idea of jumpstart, which is a, a green energy multiplayer, uh, this is uh, basically state of technology, uh, of safe technology, uh, advanced reactors. That's what jumpstart means. Uh, according to this group of jumpstart, this could be a paradigm shift. If we take at the top picture, you take the natural uranium, you do enrichment in the process, you potentially can lead to this, uh, uh, whatever you call, uh, weapons grade, uh, uranium can be produced here. And then you use the thermal reactors, light water reactors, then whatever is comes out, you have to reprocess, which I guess France does very effectively, whereas in US we do one uh, once through cycle, so you are basically storing all that spent fuel. And another way that uh, you can use this is by using the fast reactors, which we tried and others tried and gave up on the technology. And as you have heard, India is actually implementing fast reactor, first one. And whatever is the waste is basically is supposed to be put in geologic storage. How does uh, this paradigm shift can be done with Gemstar? You take a natural uranium or light water re uh, reactor spent fuel and you fluorinate this without any reprocessing that will become a, your liquid fuel recycling reactor you, like molten salt. And of course you are adding additional neutrons to it to make it very efficient. Uh, with supplemented uh, neutrons from the accelerators. And basically, you are reducing uh, the waste uh, quite a bit and also reducing the lifetime of the remnant waste by a factor of 10. And the amount here will be about a factor of 10 less than this. So this is what India's plans for thorium utilization scheme. Um, they also would like to have an accelerator, which is a superconducting accelerator to produce protons and then uh, use your uh, uh, thorium 232 fresh blanket or uranium 233 commixtures. And you produce the heat and then generate there. Uh, and basically, uh, spent fuel you can reprocess for recovering uranium-233. This is their plan. That's where I came into picture in nine, 2007 uh, while I was visiting them at the inv their invitation. Dr. Benaji suggested that we should have this uh, university, uh, Homi Baba National Institute, some kind of a collaborative effort. That's how I got into doing all these things over the last uh, five years or so. And the, as I mentioned, there is only one uh, approved first accelerator-driven system subcritical or critical program in Belgium, which is known as Amira. And unfortunately, Belgium government only offered, uh, I believe, 40 to 50 percent of the funding for this project. The remaining amount need to be obtained through international collaborations. And uh, Unfortunately, they are not able to get much collaboration on this to get uh, about $750 million as a contribution from around the world. So this basically this project has been slowed down considerably as a result of it. So you might have seen this before. and This is actually uh, a Japanese uh, Fuji reactor, which is uh, uh, I think this is accelerator molten salt breeder reactor. I think this is part of a chapter in a book that uh, I was sent last night. And basically use the proton beam here and try to convert thorium into uranium-233. And at some point, they proposed that they can build these centers around the world and supply uranium-233. But this requires enormous accelerator system producing powers up to 100 megawatts of proton beams. Of course, so this is a very expensive system and it will take a long time to develop. And this is another concept from Texas A&M University. 
the difference in this system is they will be using cyclotrons to produce the proton beam compared to accelerators to produce the proton beam. And this project was reviewed by DOE. I don't think it was funded, as far as I understand. So uh, in principle, uh, there is no funding available anywhere uh, for this kind of programs so that they can be actually developed and built and sustained. So coming back to Virginia, as I said, we have a Virginia Nuclear Energy Consortium Authority, which is a uh, political sub division of the General Assembly, and uh, we just established a Virginia Nuclear Energy Consortium, which is a non-profit entity. Uh, uh, the first director for this consortium is going to be hired in the next few days, I believe. But anyway, the way I look at it is uh, I come from an accelerator community, and we would like to develop a nuclear energy frontier research center, as I mentioned in the past. And this is a site next to Jefferson Lab, which is currently being developed as a tech park. The first part of the buildings are currently coming up. And they, the whole the commercial aspect of the shopping center and residential part will be completed by sometime in the next year. And then these people have a plan for building a tech park, uh, about 100 acres of land there in the green space. And uh, my hope is to try to build a, a Virginia accelerator-driven uh, systems R&D center. That's my dream, a pipe dream probably, but still I am looking at it and I am hoping to convince people. Uh, I, may, I may have actually some private partnership, but I need to raise uh, at least 50% from uh, other entities. That's what I'm trying to do. Uh, we heard something about the requirement for medical isotopes, so we would like that activity be, to be the first one that we can do in this R&D center. I discussed this in the past uh, conference. So we can produce very efficient CW electrons from, a, from our accelerators, and then use a converter to uh, bombard these electrons with and that will lead to your photonuclear production of medical isotopes by subjecting the targets like uh, zinc 67, uh, uh, 68 to convert to copper 67, which is a very important medical isotope. Or you could also uh, use another target that to capture the neutrons that are being uh, isotropically uh, produced to convert, uh, for example, uh, molybdenum can be produced in such a system as well. Actually, there are a couple of companies trying to build molybdenum 99 production facilities using either superconducting LINAC technology or uh, normal conducting electron uh, LINACs. So these are really getting built as we speak right now. Uh, so you will hear about them. So this is a schematic of what we have. We have all the components, and I'm trying to get uh, uh, some interest from industry and organizations to get this uh, kind of system built. And this is the handgun, and these are the type of electron Linux we have that are very efficient. As I mentioned, uh, this group, uh, Virginia ADS, Consor ADS Consortium, uh, actually runs these international workshops. As I mentioned, we have done already three, the last one being in uh, Virginia Commonwealth University, October 14th to 17th, 2014. And the next one is going to be hosted by CERN in Geneva because they want to build a proton LINAC for ADS purposes. So they are going to host it uh, October next year. Uh, if you are anyone interested, maybe you can keep a tag on what's happening there. And here I would like to show uh, the concept of Thorcon power, uh, DMSR, which Lars has uh, discussed. I believe this may be a fast way of getting nuclear energy to the starving humanity for energy, health, and happiness. So in summary, as I said, closed fuel cycle reactors and ADS thorium utilization systems require at least another 25 years uh, of R&D and uh, you know, developing the prototypes to reach the maturity. So we cannot wait another 25 years. I think uh, basically 
if one could build these molten salt reactors, which you have seen many companies, and I, I believe personally that Torcon is leading in this effort, and they are ready to be built if there is a government willing to host them. And uh, I think the, if there is a government and if a regulatory body is willing to work with Torcon, these things can be built within the first four years, a prototype of 500 megawatt. And within eight years, uh, maybe 10 gigawatt plants per year. I think this is the big way that we can change the world. I think United States should come up to the plate and help us to help the humanity. No, we are happy. We are not hungry. We have a good healthcare system, but the rest of the majority of the world doesn't have it. We need to provide them this energy. So let us start with India, where I think uh, major population of India doesn't have access to power. So let us come together and make it happen.